Well, hello everybody. How are we doing this beautiful day today? God is a good God. He is the way maker. He's the resurrection of our life. You know, um, he didn't come that he may destroy us. But he came that he'll save us. But he did come to condemn the sin that's within us. Most holy and precious Father God, we thank you and thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness, Father God. We thank you that you have delivered us and covered us. That you continue to complete us over and over again. Father God, we ask that you give us an understanding of your word today. As we come into your word, let us meditate upon this word, Father God, throughout the day throughout the night, even for the forevermore, Father God. Let us never be forgetful of this, of the word that you have delivered unto us, Father God. That we may receive it with an open heart, Father God, wholeheartedly to be sanctified. Father God, we ask that your wisdom be bestowed upon us, within us, that it may flow through us. In the mighty name of Jesus, this we pray. Hallelujah, 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 amen. So today we're going to be going into the Word of God. Let me go ahead and get it off of me because y'all know it really ain't about me. It never has been. I will not deliver you. You know, um... As me and my wife was talking earlier, I told her, I said, you know, uh, to God be the glory that he gave us Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus, he actually gives us a relationship with God himself. You know, beforehand, we would have to go through priest and follow the priest or follow another man in order to know God. But now that God has given us his word, now that God has given Christ Jesus, his son, within us, he gave us our own personal relationship as if we ourselves are the priest that we will once go to. Father God, we ask that your word be ministered through us. Let us decrease as your Holy Spirit increase in Jesus' name. Okay, let there be light. And there is light. Amen. So, today we're going to go into, once again, another one of my favorites. As it always has been one of my favorites. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. Because it gives so much, I mean, it gives us understanding, peace. gives us confidence. And yet, at the same time, it gives us correction in our hearts, in our minds, and in our bodies, you know, so it's kind of like the whole word all in one <laughs> in this Matthew chapter 5. Let's begin. Matthew chapter 5, he says, And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and he was set. His disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. 
Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is since for good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Now this right here gives me a rem remembrance of something I was also talking to my wife about the other day. You see, uh, works without faith, or faith without works. The work of God flowing through us, obviously. The work of His heart. So, now, a lot of times, I'll ask somebody to, you know, I used to ask somebody to pray for me. Pray for me, pray for my wife. And their answer would be, I'll pray for you, or we're praying. And it kind of disturbed me at that point in time, because I was still yet barely a baby coming to know Christ Jesus coming to know the word I, I lacked the confidence in my own prayers so whenever I asked I was in desperate need of prayer in that moment and not the moment to come and I was talking to my wife and I told her I said you know uh, that really used to disturb me because they would say I'll pray for you, or I'm praying for you, and not to actually put hands on me in that moment when I asked them to pray. Oh, I was expecting when I asked, pray for me, for an actual prayer. For somebody to write down a prayer, for somebody to put hands on me in that moment and pray over me, that my faith may not fail in that moment, as it already has, no less seeing the fact that I asked another person for prayer as if I lacked God in me and I couldn't ask God for the things that he told me all I had to do was ask and I will receive. But because... I was a, barely a baby in God, in Christ Jesus, in the understanding. I lacked con the, the confidence. I lacked the understanding to know that even I, myself, could ask something of God and he would give it to me. Now, what good is it for a man to say, I'll pray for you? When you've asked for prayer, you, you never hear prayer from them. And if they lack the confidence enough to pray for you in that moment, what makes you feel as if you could believe that they'll even pray for you later? Works, faith without works is dead. So if you send them off and say, hey, I'll pray for you. What good did it do? This is what it reminds me of. He says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the, law, if the salt had lost its savior, if, if, if we have lost our ability to build our brother as if we are in our, the afflicted way that they are in, as if we are bound even with them to lift their confidence up, to, to, to prove to them that God is with them, then what good are we? He says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost its Savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It's good, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be 
cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. And he said, it's going to be in the mud, walked all on and forgotten as if it wasn't even Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Which in a, the different version he says. Neither does a man light a candle and put it underneath a bed. Why would, why would you put it underneath a bed? A burning flame underneath a bed. Knowing that. That burning flame will catch fire, burn the bed, and burn the house down. And giveth light unto the all that are therein. He said, but on, on a candlestick, and giveth it giveth light unto all that are therein. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. He says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or tittle shall no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So, Christ Jesus, he tells us that the new covenant that he will make with us is that he'll put his laws into our, uh, uh, our minds and he'll write them on a tablet in our heart. That we'll want to be pleasing to him, but... As we learn of him and fill that void with the understanding of the heart of God, which is Christ Jesus. Have our minds on the Lord. Then we will be fulfilled with the perfection of God. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall no wise pass from the law, till all be filled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall te teach men to so, he shall be called the le Whew, Father God, thank you Jesus. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever... It shall do and teach them the same shall be gr called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. As, he, as we understand that Christ Jesus called the scribes and the Pharisees hypocrites. Why? Because they didn't even put on the heart of God. They didn't even put on the understanding uh, of God within their hearts they taught men to follow certain laws and certain procedures but they themselves would kill them immediately if they didn't and God's a merciful God he's a loving God and he's a forgiving God he wouldn't kill you he might whoop you But, you see, that part was there for a purpose. That we may fear to do evil. As we understand that God, He sent armies. He sent a flood. He sent fire and brimstone upon those that did evil. But that was His judgment. Man's judgment was to commit murder. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed 
the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said of, by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry, he said just angry, holding a grudge with his brother, without a cause, shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of counsel. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest thy brother have a grudge against thee, which is aught against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, and be reconciled to thy brother, and forgive your brother. And wh who's your brother? Your brother is another man that believes, that has the faith of God. And we can also consider our enemies to be our brothers to come, but as they are in their wickedness, we can't really consider them to be our brothers immediately. Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. What's thy gift? He said, our sacrifice is praise from our lips. Agree with thine adversaries quickly while thou art in the way with them. Forgive your brothers and your and, and those that uh, come against you, those that consider themselves your enemy. Forgive them quickly, immediately, while you still have a breath. Because it is sin to not forgive. Agree with thine adversaries quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time an adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou being cast into prison so in that moment we ourselves if we're caught in our sinful way we will be judged and we can receive condemnation as well Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by in no means come out till thou hast paid the uttermost parceline. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, That whosoever looketh on a woman. Now, I'm, I'm going to change this a bit, So that y'all uh, women may understand as well. It's not only for man. I know it sounds like it. But this is for woman too now. Come on. <laughs> we got we got to get some equality right here, right? <laughs> he says, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a man to lust after his hath committed adultery with his heart already. And then he says, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Women and men, come on. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her, with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And he said, if, if you know this is going to tempt you, if you know that something is going to cause you to fall into temptation, you know that you, you don't have the strength to overcome, Then don't even go around it. Take it away from your life. Completely. 
And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Now understand that this right here, even Jesus Christ himself, he said that he only, that Moses, he gave this commandment of a writing of divorcement only for the hardness of the unbeliever's heart. Because he saw that they could not stand strong enough to sacrifice themselves. Jesus Christ, he sacrificed himself for the unbeliever. Unbeliever. Not for the believer, but for the unbeliever. He laid down his life for the unbeliever. That they may have faith. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, for the sake, for, except for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the king of uh, it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou hast because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your, your communication be Yes or no, he says, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. And he said, well, if you don't say yes or no, then more than likely you're trying to justify a situation. And that's because of the hardness or the unbelief in your heart or the lust that you've chosen to commit already because many people they, they have lusted in their hearts and they've already decided that they were going to do it immediately so no matter what you would have done or else even God they've already hid themselves in the bush they're, they're hiding and they don't and when God does see them well they'll reveal their sin unto them some will fear and some won't. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a two for a two. But I say unto you that ye, ye resist not evil. He said, but I'm saying unto you that you haven't even resisted evil yet in your own heart. But whosoever shall smite thee on the on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Don't you know that everyone was, everyone that Christ Jesus loved, mostly, was his enemy. They were enemies of the cross, all unbelievers. Now the disciples, they were believers. But even them, their, even them they, their selves denied Christ. Even them, them their selves uh, doubted and, and feared. 
and had heaviness. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Now we understand that Christ Jesus is in us. And our Father God is in Christ as he is the work and he is the wisdom that flow through Christ. He is the one that raised Christ from the dead as well under glory. So we understand all these things as Christ is in us and we are in Christ. We have no reason to say that we cannot do any of these things. The Holy Spirit is upon us. He says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father. He said, not that you may be known or seen or anything as the children of your Father, but that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun, the sun that that, that bright shining uh, heated sun, he he makes it to go up and down throughout the day and throughout the night on the good and the evil. He said, for he maketh his sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And the rain itself, he sends on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Don't even the wicked man himself love his own wicked people? He says, And if you salute your brethren, what more do you than others? Now, if you just salute those, if you go greet the people that you know are of the household of faith, what good is it? Didn't Christ come that he may receive another? Or are we the scribes and the Pharisees? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Perfection. Most heavenly precious Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your life, Father God. We ask that you deliver us by this word, Father God. Let us meditate in this word, Father God. Let us believe in your word, Father God, that we may receive your word, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! To God be the glory! He tells us, he says, it is finished.